What up, though, y'all? This is Ami with the Real Visual Outlet, and it's always beside me. So so. And today we have a special guest on the show with us. L'Oreal, the East Side. <laughs> <laughs> the East Side. All right, L'Oreal, tell us your social media and where you're from. My social media is L'Oreal of Judah. That's L A R E L L O F J U D A, and um, I'm from the East Side, like I said before. So. Right, tell us, Lorel, what was it growing up like for you in Detroit? East Side. The East Side, right. <laughs> crazy. Like, every, you know, just doing some of everything. East Side was, you know, just, 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 you know, it, 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 was, it was a learning experience. Everything that I learned growing up kind of molded me into the person that I am today. So, you know, it, you know, everything was a learning experience. I started off, uh, uh um, Kind of like grew up off of Seven Mile, Seven Mile in uh, uh, Shiner area, mm. between Shiner and Grasher. Then later on in the years, I kind of moved out to the suburbs, went to high school in the suburbs. And, you know, that gave me kind of like the best of both worlds. So I kind of got to experience the suburbs and the hood. So. You sound a little yeah. bit like me. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I'm from um, uh, Seven Mile and Grasher, too, on the east side. Mm -hmm. I grew up on... Um, um, Maple View. Oh yeah, there. you stay right on the street. Yeah, yeah. Right you stay right on the street. And then I, um, <laughs> I moved out to Taylor when I was like 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I've yeah. been out there ever since. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good though to have that balance of both. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You get the best of both words. You know how to get hood and you know how to get a little. Right, you know, right. You probably when you got to, <laughs> you know, put your interview voice on. Yeah. Like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You right. Right. right, exactly. You are a Christian artist. Mm hmm yeah. And your genre, you would say, is what Christian rap, Christian? Could you sing I'm just too? An you know? yeah. I'm just an artist. I try not to box myself in, mm -hmm. and I really with the, you know, with the with the Christian artist thing too. It kind of like you know, I, the term I like the term because that's you know I believe in Christ and that's what I, I follow. But it's just like I try not to box myself in. Mm -hmm. But it's Christian music. It's just I'm a follower of Christ, so you mm -hmm. know everything that I do, I make sure that is. I try not to force my message on people, but I make sure that people know the reason why you're doing the, what I'm doing is because of Christ. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's never a, oh, you need to do this or you're going to hell. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the message, the message that's implied is, you know, Christ at the end of the day is to bring people to believe, you know, kind of give them to plant that seed to make them. Think how I think a little bit, you know. You get what I'm saying? So like, yeah, you know. yeah. We, we definitely yeah. got that. We were listening, and we were mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, this is this is mm -hmm. nice. I mm -hmm. I will listen to mm -hmm. it." You know, you're yeah. not pushing it on right. them, and right. you know, it's 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 more receptive because, like right. you said, you don't want to label yourself. Nowadays, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't want to label themselves and box themselves mm -hmm. in as well. So right. it makes it more accessible to right. people of all right kinds, right and I, and I also think it's good to stand on what you believe in if you believe in a certain thing you don't have to compromise on it but you mm -hmm. do have to respect other people's views and other people's lifestyles the way that they you live you know you can't necessarily you can't force what you believe on people but like i said you can plant that seed mm -hmm. you know and maybe that'll make them sway oh if you live in that way then they'll make them like okay he's genuine about what he's doing so maybe it's something to take into consideration so Absolutely. Yeah, I think like that, yeah. So now, did you grow up Christian? No, I mean, I've been Christian most of my life by, by default, but mm -hmm. without knowing. You get what I'm saying? Before mm -hmm. you come to the knowledge of self and trying to figure out, like, oh, this I'm doing this because my mama and my grandmama mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. And then you go on that little journey. It, it's all about finding yourself with me. And I I think the, the biggest thing is is to question everything and to find out the answers on your own, try everything, you know, call out to God, ask God, you know, is it real? Is it, should I be doing this? Should I be doing this? Let me see something. Let me get some signs or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It's, it's about having your own personal relationship with the Most High. So, uh, uh, I grew up, I grew up semi in church, not too much in church, but I did, you know, know about God. Uh, my father kind of planted that seed. My mother went to church and all that. Got saved when I was 12 and then, but I was little then, I didn't understand, so went out in the world, did all type of crazy stuff, and then it ended up bringing me back th that way, you mm -hmm. know, so. What made you decide to in incorporate kind of like um, the music aspect into like, you know, you giving your message, you know, out into the world? I mean, mm -hmm. I know that singing is in the church anyway, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But um, 
you know, because you could have went the route of like just preaching, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that, instead of like preaching through your right. music. Well, I always did music before I before I started doing Christian music. I was doing secular music, and um, I was kind of you know I was getting out there, I was getting out there a little bit, but the li water. the lifestyle the lifestyle that I was living. It was like it was just taking me in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So music has always been my way to connect to people because I found that people like the message that I give more. So when I when I when I speak it, you might be like, oh, okay. Uh. Mm -hmm. But when I sing it or I rap it, they're like, okay, that sounds sweet. I listen right, to right. that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when I sometimes when you preach when you preach it to people and you just like giving mm -hmm. it something like that, they don't receive it like that. But they receive it through the music, mm -hmm. and that's always been my way to connect with people. So now. Um, to take to take away from like what I was doing, I still it took me a while to get there to find out my sound and to figure out how I can deliver that message and still make it sound good. Cause right. I, I didn't want to do it at first. I thought it was corny. I'm like, oh, it's corny. I'm just I'm gonna go to church and just mm -hmm. you know live my little saved life, live my best little saved life, and I'm just not gonna do yeah. the music yeah, no more. You want to be no Kirk Franklin? Yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> Kirk Franklin is he the elite? You know what I'm right, saying? Right. He makes stuff sound good. But when you think about Christian rap and you don't hear too many people. Yeah. It's like it's kind of corny. Then they start mixing it with the trap music and the mm -hmm. people are like, oh my goodness, man, I don't want to listen to this. I'd rather just listen to the real thing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, one thing I, I can say mm -hmm. like about your music mm -hmm. though is, um, you know, we were listening mm -hmm. to it and talking, and that I kind of feel like it does break mm -hmm. like barriers a little bit mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. just like what you said, like I don't really listen to like you know right. Right. gospel music right. like that or mm -hmm. like Christian music like that. Um, mm -hmm. But what I like about yours is it brings it to like the new age. Mm -hmm. right, you know right. what I mean? To kind of reach that ear of like a younger crowd because. Right, right. um, your music sound like you could hear it on a gospel channel, but you could also hear it on 107.5 or, right. you know what I mean, 97.9 right, right. or something right. like that, too. Right, yeah. and that's the, that's the whole goal is to to make it something that everybody can listen to, mm -hmm. that the youth can still bounce to, because mm -hmm. I want to I wanna listen to stuff that I can still bounce to, you know what I'm <laughs> saying, and still have that, and still have that message in it. Because a lot of this stuff, man, nowadays is just too much. There's too much negativity in it. There's too much degrading of women. It's too much, you know what I'm saying? It's just mm -hmm. too, it's too much of the opposite so i just want to shed a light on a different sound like no y'all don't got to do this y'all can do something else too mm -hmm. and still make it look cool you can still be good looking and do what you do you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying on this side so that's the whole goal that's the whole goal so as an artist you know you say you don't you know box yourself in mm -hmm. but you rap and you sing mm -hmm. um as far as the church goes how are they receptive to it being rap and you know things of that nature because I mean, you get a you know you hear a lot of flack about that like the old people but yeah a lot but i mean nowadays it's, it's a little bit more receptive yes. now than it was back in the day because mm -hmm. you know you got a lot of people they just want the kids to do something different now it's just like mm -hmm. we want y'all to go so if this was y'all doing go ahead and do it as long as you ain't doing too much you know, <laughs> We ain't gonna have no target in that in the church. Right. That. We ain't gonna have extra stuff in. We ain't gonna have none of that. But so that's more receptive. But like my like the church that I go to, which mm -hmm. is uh, Calvary Church of Jesus Christ on Mount Elliot. So y'all can make sure y'all come. <laughs> but uh, my pastor, which is uh, he's my uncle, but he's he's cool about it. He 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 loves what we're doing, and he he just he, you know he he uh, you know just tells us to keep doing what we're doing. We got a couple a couple of other. Uh, kids in the church that rap uh, brothers of faith you know they got a video um out now that's doing uh, pretty good mm -hmm. but you know they they all support us so yeah so the best version of me mm -hmm. chapter 27 mm -hmm. latest album mm -hmm. tell us about the process for creating that album you know what inspired it you know uh, <laughs> Life, <laughs> struggling, struggling with a with a uh, with a SKR on there, struggling. Uh, no, but that, the reason why um, I named the album "Best Version of Me," uh, I kind of got inspired by living my best life type of the thing, and I was like, "Oh, what can I make to be like, you know, like I, w I just want to be the best version of myself." Mm -hmm. So I kind of, kind of, you know, that was trending at the time, so I kind of went off of that and. um but the whole, the whole, project. the yeah, project in itself was just me being honest of being like where I came from and the things that I was doing in the, in the way that I was living my life, uh, you know, before I really like gave myself over, uh, uh, to Christ and 
you know, before we got married, before me and my wife got married, I was out here doing everything that everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that when people get in the church or when they think that they're saved or they think that they're at a place on a higher plateau, they become, um, they like almost unrelatable. Like, it's like, oh, I don't, I don't understand that you're a sinner. I can't be around you. Like, but I've been there, you know, mm -hmm. I've been, I've been in those places. I've been to the point where I wanted to hurt myself or, or been in those places where I was messing with somebody and I got caught up and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I've been there, I've been, I've been that person. So I always try to make myself relatable. I try to make relatable content and I try to make music that people can identify with mm. because that's the, at the end, go, that's all people want. We want to, we, we are spiritual beings and we want to have a spiritual connection, mm -hmm. you know, in any way, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we all connected, it, it, yeah. you know, no mm, matter what religion, yeah. what race, mm -hmm. we all connected. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I definitely agree. Yeah, so the whole the whole purpose of the project was to just be honest and lay it all out there. Mm -hmm. You know, like on my, uh, I don't know if you heard the one song I did, Amends, but I was just talking about different, just people that I've, uh, things that I've done in my past and, you know, just trying to make amends for it, just trying to get on good terms with God and get my life right, mm -hmm. get myself in order marry my wife you know mm -hmm. letting the past go and moving forward and that man's turned into the best version of me getting there but still struggling with it and trying to be and still trying to be a better person after i get after i let the past go so you know absolutely yeah yeah and so you living the best version of you right now no i mean i'm doing <laughs> I, I, I got a long way to go got a i got a long way to go you know i feel like as long as we here we still got we got you still got something yeah, to work we got, on until yeah. we die you it's always gonna be a learning um, experience and um and when you done learning it's time for you to go mm -hmm. it's time for you to lead this boy you up out of here there ain't nothing else for you to learn so you up out of here but i feel like that's one of the uh, fruits of the spirit is long suffering we always gonna have something that we gonna have to deal with mm -hmm. while we here what you know whatever it may be whatever that that struggle may be for you but it's always something for us to to have to to go to build us to build our character and build our dependency on god so mm -hmm. yeah that's deep mm -hmm. that's deep yeah mm -hmm. You know your um your album cover your mm -hmm. visuals are mm -hmm. very unique to me mm -hmm. um the best version of me chapter mm -hmm. 27 mm -hmm. um i think the the cover art is really nice could mm -hmm. you like did you create that did you help have a part in that is it like any meaning behind it symbolic meaning we went we actually so the thing was we just when we shot the video, we, we did so many shots. We just did like random shots just everywhere. We went to the church, as you've seen, and mm -hmm. went to different places and just, just shot different. Because I just wanted to make it look artistic. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. the shot from the cover, uh, the cover is actually, we went to a museum in Ohio. I, I'm not, ex I'm, it was some type of exhibit, like a flower exhibit where they had just different flowers. I can't even remember the exact name of it, but we went there. And then we had a few pictures that we went through, but that one just stuck out to me. So I was like, I want to use this picture for the album mm -hmm. cover. You know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of looking off. I wasn't really paying attention, but mm -hmm. I liked it. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to use this one for the album cover. And, you know, so nice. I added it and, you know, put a little edit on it and yeah, fix it up dub. a little bit, put the dub on there, yeah. represent the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. yeah, but yeah, everything I try to, I try to just, I want it, I want everything to just be in an art, art artistic form because I'm an artistic person. I just like everything to just look different and not do things in normality. I like to do things outside out of the, you know outside of the norm mm -hmm. and just just push it as much as I can. You know, just give people a different look. And like I said, we want to. It's not to make uh, Christianity or or being a follower of Christ look cool, but I mean I try to make it look cool because. You know, you you want to attract people. You do want people to listen to the music. I'm not making it for no reason for people not to listen to it and not to be attracted to it. You know, so that's the whole goal. You know. What's your take on rap music and the mainstream of people? You know that are out here today, or basically, or even the Detroit rap scene. Do you are you familiar with that? Or? Yeah, because I was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I was out here. Um, you know, it's a it's like one of those. It's one of those fine lines. I don't really. I don't want to touch it too much because I don't want to feel like I'm like I'm like I'm placing judgment on people. But I just feel like it's a lot of like I said earlier. It's a lot of negativity and it's a lot of you know, this craziness going on. Like I feel like people do everything nowadays is for shock value. Mm -hmm. You know, like everything is for shock value. Everything is for um, 
for fame in a way. And it's like, what's the next thing? Like, what's the next thing I can do to get somebody to look at me so I can gain this attention? What can I th what can I post up on Instagram to make somebody like, oh, hey, let me, yeah, hey, this guy's crazy. Let me follow him. And I feel like it's a little bit too much of that going on. Mm -hmm. With everything, not in just the Detroit rap scene, but just, rap, and just everything in general, Main music street. in general, and entertainment. And it's just like, just be yourself. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just Absolutely. be yourself. And I feel like people don't want to be themselves because it hurts to be yourself. True. It hurts. True. It hurts. And I, I, you don't I've know been how many artists mm -hmm. that come on these mm -hmm. shows that say that they, you know, they talk about things mm -hmm. that that's not. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, exactly. It's, it's funny. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, and I was the same way. Like I said, I was the same way. I was doing the same thing. I was, you know, I found that a lot of the things that I wasn't doing when I started talking about them, then I started doing it. I brought it into existence because I started speaking on it. And then I, I attracted that type of attention and the type of the uh, surrounding from me speaking it into existence. But a lot of the things I wasn't doing, you know, and but it but it hurts when you have to like really be yourself when you can't be that character and you like, oh man, I gotta be myself now. And that's what God hit me with. He's like, No, bro, you gotta do I need you to do this. You you trying to do this, but this ain't for you. So I need you to I need you to come over here, I need you to be real, I need you to be honest with yourself and I need you to, I need you over here. This is not for you. You know, and I feel like a lot of people like that. I feel like it's a lot of people like that out here, but they they're scared to be because they're scared of the, the you know, the backlash yeah, or what they're gonna get or how people will receive them. So, you know, Makes sense. I know how it is. You know, I understand, but it's just time to be real. And nowadays, man, we don't know how long we're gonna be here. Nipsey Hussle just got killed. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> that true. was a surprise. You know, it was yes. just like, well, and he was doing good. You know, he was, he was one. Of, yeah, he was doing good. And to see a person like that, just like, like man. We don't know how long you're gonna be here. So yeah. just be real with yourself. Be honest and you know, man up and just do what you gotta do. But you know, you gotta be yourself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. you gotta be yourself. Okay. So what's a what's a misconception about Christian music um that you've heard? Because I know you I seen on one post that you said, you know, um Christian rappers don't have no bars, you know, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what's what's a misconception that you've heard? And then what exactly is like Christian music? Honestly, I don't I don't think that should be I, I really don't think that should be a label like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I like I like I said, I just identify as I'm a follower of Christ mm -hmm. and that that term kinda of be like, you know, it's so much that come with it and you get so much negativity with it because there's so many people like in the church is doing crazy stuff and just it's like it's kind of it's like you just gotta i'm a follower of christ at the end of the day yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> and i don't want to and i don't want other and i don't want people that 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 are christians to think that i'm saying that i'm not a christian either you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it go both ways but i believe in christ i follow christ i read the bible and that's my that's the life that i live but it's so much that comes with that term now and you you think about all this crazy stuff that's going on in the church, and then you be like, I'm good. I don't even want to associate myself with a lot of these, a lot of this stuff that's going on out here. But I think Christian, I think Christian rap in itself is kind of corny. Um, and not to talk about, and not to talk about Christian rap because it's some, it's a lot of people that I that I've met that I even have on my project that are a, a Christian artists or or followers of Christ that make music. That we and we make good music. We make we make good music, but it's but it's starting to change now. I see that it's starting to change, and more real people are coming to the forefront. It's been a lot of like coonery going on, if you ask me. It's just been a lot of just like clowning, and I feel like the church wants to mix with the world so bad, and it's not a it's not a good mixture. It's not a mixture to win souls. It's a mixture to just. Okay, whatever goes nowadays, just whatever goes, we can do this. We don't gotta live a certain way. Everybody saved at the end of the day. And if you really read the book, it's like it don't go like that, bro. We still got rules that we gotta follow, and it's still certain, you know, things that we gotta abide by. But I feel like it's just a anything goes type of thing nowadays. And it's like, what's the point of even doing it if we was gonna, if I was gonna, it ain't no point if if I feel like. If I'm gonna go to hell anyway, let me just go out and do what I'm doing in the first place, and not follow what what I said I was gonna follow. Why would I be? Why would I go to hell from the church? 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would be the point? I could just go out and live any type of way. Mm -hmm. Kill, steal, shoot, you know what I'm saying? Rob mm -hmm. people, you know, you know, but I don't know. I just feel like it's a lot of clowning in the with that with the with the title of Christianity okay. behind it, even from the pastors on down to the congregation, it'd be a lot of stuff that just ain't right. And mm -hmm. I understand why people why why people get turned away from God because the people that we have in the leadership positions are doing the most wrong. They're doing worse than the people that's out in the world. So mm -hmm. it's like, I understand why that turned people off and they're like, man, I don't believe in no Jesus. I don't believe in no Christ. I don't believe in all. I'm good. I understand. Mm -hmm. I get it. But now, do you think that people, you know, should like separate the... Because I, I hear a lot of times people say like, well, you don't, you don't need to go to church, like physically go to church mm -hmm. to Churches be... Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? And stuff mm -hmm. like that. So hearing you say like um that there's people you know that are doing bad things in the mm -hmm. church and, and, and stuff like that and when people see that they're like you know i don't want to be associated with that but you know it almost seems like people need to kind of separate the the man you know mm -hmm. from oh, no, you're the faith right. and, and what it is yeah you're definitely right and that's what we, that's what it is we uh we look we look to that person whether it be a pastor or whatever, as as our God, sometimes, mm -hmm. and we expect them to be right, like they not, like they not made of sin, just like we are. Right. We all fall short, you know. And I think when when they get messed up, then that set that set other people back, and we look at that. But you, like I said earlier, you have to have that connection with yourself. You gotta find with, with God yourself. You gotta find that connection yourself. Is if you don't, when somebody around you stumble or that's in, that's leading you, you will fall too mm -hmm. in a way, you know. So. It's like you have to you have to build that connection by yourself, and we are the church. It's the, the ch going to the build. It's a building, but mm -hmm. the people are the church. We are the body of Christ. You get what I'm saying? So church is just us fellowship, and we could be sitting in here right now having mm -hmm. church. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Which we are. We are. We're talking yeah. about. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is fellowship, and so you know, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> so with this with this project. Um, Best version of me. Where are you trying to trying to take it? Because um, I know you've done uh, visuals for it already. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that they're trying to do to promote this or to put uh, it more out there? Uh, more performances and just networking, getting out there. It's the same thing. Okay. So whether you in the church community or you out here going to radio stations, up the street at the radio station, <laughs> trying to get on on Friday. Mm -hmm. I used to be up there all the time too. I had a friend that worked up, uh, you know, Sale. He used to work up there. He had a radio show, um, mm -hmm. but I used to stay up there all the time. But it's the same thing though. Just networking, more videos, more visuals, because people like visuals. I'm actually working on a visual for someone like me right now. I really want to kind of want to do a video for everything mm -hmm. on a project. So just to give people a different, you know, just a look at how I envision the the project to look like. So, mm -hmm. so that's the thing, and just trying to get out here and just net like mingle and meet people, go all over wherever I can go, and just just build, just right. keep brand, keep building a brand. Yeah. Okay. What's something that you would want to tell um, a listener of yours um, that is, you know trying to get to where you are as far as musically you know delving off into rap and mm -hmm. you know singing who is within the church was something that you would tell them you know oh man uh i guess i mean just do it just do it if that's what you feel like you should be doing mm -hmm. and just try to own your crap perfect your craft as much as you can um I've been doing this for almost 10 years, like, so it's like I kind of know myself, I know my sound a little bit, what I, what notes to hit, what not to hit, how to, what to say, what not to say, kind of, and, you know, I produce most of my own stuff, so, it's just like, just do it, just go ahead, do it, why not, mm -hmm. what's the, what's stopping you, just go ahead and do it. Okay, do the thing, and you'll have power. do it, right, exactly. Okay, um, do you have any uh, upcoming projects? You know, you know, you just released the best version of me. Mm -hmm. Are you working on anything behind the scenes? I'm kind of working on stuff a little bit. Uh, I have a joint project, uh, which is uh, my uh, my my act from uh, he's from New York. His name Sean Marshall, the Humble Lion. Uh, we supposed to be doing like um, like a Hebrew Israel like kind of uh, type of thing with the uh, so we uh, just trying to enlighten people and get them hip to just like our heritage and our lineage and where we actually come from and just letting people know 
who we are for identity pur purposes mm -hmm. and not just yeah just to let people know you know so so do you consider yourself a hebrew israelite I'll, I'll, i'm not a, i'm not an israelite either i, mm -hmm. I am I'll, I'll, through, lineage, through lineage but it's a lot of the a lot of the stuff that they that they i'm not with the hate stuff you get what i'm yeah, saying i'm not they with get the, a lot of backlash yeah i'm not with the i'm not with the oh i'm about to it's a, first of all my wife is a hispanic too so you mm -hmm. know but I'm just not. I'm not. So, I'm not so pro black where I just hate everybody. And it's just like I, I, the 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 knowing your your ancestry and where you come from is for identity purposes to me. And I feel like if you actually read the word and you just don't stay in the Old Testament, you read the New Testament, you can see that you know God came for everybody. He came. Christ came for everybody, not just us because we're black. You mm -hmm. know. And if you read the words, you can you can see that it clearly says that in there. But I think, you know, once people find out, when you find out stuff and you don't, and you aren't led by the Spirit of God, when mm -hmm. you find out certain information, you, it gives you pride. You know what I'm saying? Messiah syndrome. Yeah, yeah. You get the, you know, you get puffed up and you mm. think that it's just like, okay, yeah, I found out what I am now. So let me bash everybody else and tell them that, yeah, you yep. going to hell. You, you I've been sitting on the east side. Yeah, you I know, feel like we all do. Because yeah. I was like, I was ready to leave. I was about to stop going to church. I'm like, why are they not teaching this? I'm, I'm done. I found out who I am. I'm about to leave. I'm gone. I ain't never talking to my pastor again. I'm, I quit. I'm done. I, but it, but I understand why people do that. It's because like we've been lied to for so long. It's like, yeah, get dramatic. Like you laugh because you experienced it. It's like we've been lied to for so long. It was like, why didn't you tell us this? It's like, it was like, it's like, why didn't you tell us this? Like you should have told us this. It's like, but. I find it, but for identity purposes, it does matter, but not for salvation, you mm -hmm. know, because Christ came for everybody. But I feel like we should know. I feel like people should know because we we so busy chasing other people's identity and trying to look like other people and wanting to be other na uh, other cultures and, you know what I'm saying, everything but ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the African-Americans, the so-called African-Americans, the Hebrews, the ones that's in America, uh, that's, that's in America, uh, we just don't know about ourselves. We don't know anything about ourselves. We, mm -hmm. And they and, they, and through history, they made sure that we didn't know about ourselves. You know, it's been so, and we could go on and on about that. I could be talking about that all yeah, day, but yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. what, you know, your previous singles you had, like Belly mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Right. You know, um, you touched on a lot of stuff, like with Hebrew, and I, mm -hmm. I was telling mm -hmm. so, so mm -hmm. like, you know, I wonder if he's a Hebrew Israelite mm -hmm. or is he like, you know, connected to that? Yeah, they, a lot of them don't like the fact that I, they, 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 a lot of them do rock with me, but they don't like the fact that I use Jesus. They don't use that term. They use the, mm -hmm. the they want to say, you know, Yeshua and, you know, you got to say Yah and Yahweh. But I know the name that I call, and I know the answers that I got from the name that I call. So it's not a matter of the name. It's a connection of the heart. It's your personal connection with the Most High. It's your personal connection with God. So he knew the name that we was going to use when we came over here. He knew, you think we've been saying the, long, the wrong name all this time? But it's been connected to that image of white Christ. So a lot of people have a hard time dealing with that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I understand that too. Right. But I also understand, I, I, I have understanding through the Holy Spirit. And I understand that it's not that complicated. It's not that mm -hmm. complicated. You know, I think sometimes we just overdo it, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we get, when we get knowledge of something, it just, you take it way left field. We just go too far with it. But it's good though to know. It's good to know. You gotta know. You gotta know. Yeah. Cause it's a it's a lot of shifting. It's a lot of changing. It's a lot of changing in the atmosphere. Oh yeah. It's a lot of shifting, man. So yeah, I think we've been through a big transition mm -hmm. just within the last five ten years. You know, man, last it's, four or five months. <laughs> that <laughs> too. It's man, speeding up. Yeah, every it's speeding up. We don't know up. what's going on, man. That's why I said we gotta be prepared. You don't know when you when you gonna go. I done lost. I just lost my granddaddy. My auntie died a few weeks ago. Then one of my uncles died in like January. So back to back. Three people. Then you got the, on top of the celebrities and the people that's dying. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's something. It's like, man, it's a, it's something. It's something that's happening, man. Mm -hmm. And it's a, you better be ready. You better mm -hmm. be prepared. Whichever way you trying to be prepared, you better be prepared for it because it's something. Right. It's something right. happening. For sure. Yeah. Hey, well, if you don't mind giving us a fun fact about yourself. A fun fact. 
But what's my fun fact? I don't got no fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I like sushi. But she she put me on sushi though. I okay. before I before we got together, I wasn't cultured on it. But now I eat sushi, <laughs> uh, Thai food, everything. So yeah, I like sushi and I I really want to get on this like this 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 like this health nut binge type thing and start eating like all organic food and just like Everybody get on my Doctor C my Doctor C B uh, diet. <laughs> Because I feel like I feel like a lot of our sickness comes from what we eat, and, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of yeah, everything. And I feel like we could, we can heal ourselves if we eat right. Because everything comes from what we put in our body. So exactly, that's one fact, I guess. All right. So do you have any shout outs that you want to give? Oh, uh, I want to give a shout out to my church again, uh, uh, Calvary Church of Jesus Christ on Mount Elliot and Varney. Uh, Give a shout out to uh, Brothers of Faith. Those are my little dogs. They be rapping out. Hopefully, they get to do an interview with y'all too. And uh, Digital Labor Studios. Uh, that's me and my partner's studios. And that's on the west side, Seven Mile and Evergreen. So, if y'all looking for a nice studio, like a professional studio, Digital Labor Studios, 19517, West Seven Mile Road. So, man, yeah, that's pretty much it. And my mama and my wife. My <laughs> wife and my mama. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so. All right. Well, we want to thank you for coming out to the Real Visual Outlet, sitting yeah. with us, talking with us. And we wish time. you much, much, much success. Oh, yeah. We're going to be talking. We're going to be talking. I'm going to be, uh, be messing with y'all <laughs> somehow, some way. So, That's yeah. great. Yeah. Continue your journey. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. <laughs> Would you look at God?